Hello everyone, this is Mike from Lumion, and today I'm going to show you how to create architectural renders with Lumion in just 15 minutes. Let's get started. In this video, I'll show you how to quickly add context to your design by using OpenStreetMap and the new photo matching tool, which helps you place your model in a real world environment. This is super useful when clients want to imagine the project in the actual location. For our scene, we'll be using the house included in one of the new templates. Double click this icon to open up the imported models library. Now you can see all of the models that were imported in this scene, and they are ready for you to use. To start, click on new to create a new project. Now, let's select a template. For this video, I'll use the plane template. Before I import the model, I will use OpenStreetMap to add streets and buildings in the area of our design. First, go to the Landscape tab and click on the OpenStreetMap button. Now, click here to turn it on. Then, you can click this button to select an area around our design. We can't see the whole area, so let's use the WASD keys to move around and zoom out, and use the Q&E keys to move up and down until we can see the whole area. To move faster, you can hold Shift, and if you hold Space in addition to Shift, then it will move even faster. Now you can move around the map by dragging the left mouse or zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. Next, you can click on a spot on the map to choose it. Alternatively, you can search for an area to use as the target location. I will use this location in the Netherlands. I will also put the address in the description box below the video so you can just copy and paste it to follow along. Then you can set the range with this slider here. And you can also choose whether you want to import the height map here. Then just click here to start downloading. You can see that the model now has these buildings and streets obtained from the OpenStreetMap database, which is an open source project where people can add their own content. Now let's look at some OpenStreetMap settings. Here you can choose some style presets to change the appearance of the buildings. These options let you turn on and off certain parts of the area, such as water, earth, land use, buildings, and roads. Some buildings have accurate height dimensions, while others don't have any height information at all. In that case, you can use this slider to adjust the height of the buildings that did not have a height specified for them. And you can also randomize the building's height with this slider. Since we'll be adding our own design to this scene, we need to hide some buildings at our target location. To do that, click on the eye icon. Now, click on the building that you want to hide and then click on OK and our building has disappeared. To quickly move to this position, you can double click the right mouse button. Now we can go to the objects tab, then go to the imported models library and place our buildings here. When placing the model, you can hold down the R key to rotate. That looks good. We can always adjust the position after we've placed it. We can also adjust the rotation some more, so let's use this slider. Holding shift will let you do it more precisely, or I can double click and type in a specific value, then press enter. Now let's start editing the materials by going to the materials tab in the bottom left section of the user interface. Let's move closer to this area here and click on this surface to make changes to its material. To edit this material, we can first make it a standard material. Now you can adjust the additional properties of the materials, such as adding a normal map using this button here. You can also adjust the bumpiness of the normal map with this relief slider. There are also other settings such as colorization. Using this will help you see the bumps easier too. Next, we can adjust the gloss and reflectivity. Finally, there's the scale to adjust the size of your texture. Instead of editing materials, you can replace the imported materials with Lumion materials. Now just repeat this process for any material that you want to edit. There we go. Our model is starting to look really good. Now let's populate the surroundings of our project by adding some objects. When adding trees, try to use real photos at the project's location as a reference so you can place trees in a similar position. However, to save ourselves some time, we don't have to be too accurate. Let's just use the single placement and mass placement tool to add a couple of trees around the building. 
I'll also use one of the fine detail nature objects. You can add some people in front of the house too. Once we are happy with how our scene looks, let's start creating some images. To do that, click here to go to the photo mode. First, let's find a good position for our image. You can also change the focal length with this slider here. Alternatively, you can double click, backspace, and type in a specific number. Once you've found a good position, you can save it by clicking on the store camera button. There we go. Now, let's test render this image to see how it looks. As you can see, the image quality is slightly better than what we saw in build mode. To improve the quality even further, we can click here to add a style. Here you will see a collection of styles that we can use. For this scene, I'll use the realistic style. A style is essentially a stack of effects that is optimized for quick use. But the cool thing is that you can always make changes to these existing effects, or add new ones if you'd like. I'll add a real skies effect and adjust the position of the sun like so. We can also change the background image here. You may have noticed Lumion will render our photo whenever we click on the preview window. This is possible because of a new feature in Lumion 10 called High Quality Preview. You can turn it on and off by going to the settings and click on this icon here. I like this new feature a lot, so I will leave it on. Now, let's render this scene again and compare it to our previous render. As you can see, with some quick work, our render is already so much better. I'll zoom out and create another view where I can see more of the OpenStreetMap environment. When creating a new view, instead of adding effects from scratch, you can go back to the previous view and click this menu, edit, and copy the effects. Then go to the new view and paste it. That's a super quick way to transfer effects. In Lumion 10, there's another way to create context around your design, which is to use the new photo matching feature. To do that, let's create another image. Now we can click on the FX button to add an effect. In the camera category, click on photo matching to add it to the effects stack. Now we can click on the pencil icon to start editing this effect. First, you'll see an example is already loaded. If you click here on the Load Example option, you can see that Lumion included several other examples that we can try and learn from, as well as tutorials down here. Each of these examples are optimized to show you how to use the photo matching tool in different scenarios. If you're planning to create an aerial render, then try the From Above 1 and 2 examples. The inner corner examples are good for interior, while the outer corner examples are good for exterior. But in this case, we will be using a custom photo, so I can click here. Now we can load in the photo that we want to use. You can go to the link in the description box to download this photo and follow along. Now that we've loaded the photo, let's take a look at these objects. Here you can see a cube, which is meant to be used as a reference, so we can get a sense of how our model will look compared to the photo. And here you can see four different lines, two for the x-axis and two for the z-axis. You can drag each point of these lines to align it to the perspective lines in your photo. I will use this building here as a reference to align my X and Z axes. When adjusting these points, you can hold Shift to precisely set the position. Alternatively, you can pull the lines out a lot longer. This will give you even more control over the angle of the perspective lines. You can also try different reference objects down here, such as boxes and planes, or you can click here to turn it off. Next, click on this button to start placing a reference point in our model. Let's place it at this corner of the building, then click back when we're done. When the model is loaded, it will be at 50% transparency by default, so we can increase that to 100%. The model still looks a bit too big for the photo, so we can use the scale slider to adjust it to fit the photo. As you can see, the model is loaded, but you can see that some parts of our scene are blocking the photo. So I will go back to build mode and hide some objects in the scene. An easy way to do that is by using layers. First, let's go to the Objects tab and click here to start selecting objects. You can filter which category you want to select here. In this case, I will choose All Categories. Now we can press Control and drag the left mouse button to select all the objects in the scene that we want to hide. We don't want to hide the house, so let's hold control and left click it to deselect the house. On this window on the top right, 
you can see these objects are on layer 1. So let's use the drop down menu and move them to layer 2. Now we can hover at the top of the scene and click on the eye icon on layer 2 to hide it. As for the OpenStreetMap environment, we need to go to the Landscape tab and turn it off using this button. Now, let's go back to the Photo mode and continue to edit our photo match image. Again, I can change the size of the model with this slider here. Then, I can use the Orientation slider to rotate the model around the reference point. I can also use the reference point to move the position of the model. There we go. Just repeat this process until you have the model at the position that you want. When adjusting, you can hold shift and drag the slider to adjust it more precisely. Once you are happy with the photo match, we can click here to go back. The scene is looking good. Now, let's add some effects so that the lighting of the model can match the lighting of the photo better. First, let's add a real skies effect. Now we can adjust the heading to change the direction of the lighting. In the photo, the lighting condition seems to be an overcast day. So, let's choose one of the overcast backgrounds. It's a little too dark. Changing the brightness here is not very effective, so we can add the exposure effect instead and increase it to make it brighter. Next, let's add the skylight effect, which helps disperse light from the sky onto the scene so that the lighting is more realistic. The default setting is good enough, so just leave it as is. Let's also add the hyperlight effect, which helps simulate radiosity and increase the light bounces in the scene. I will also leave this at the default settings. Now, let's add the shadow effect and adjust the omni shadow and the brightness so that there's more shadows in our scene, especially in the interior. Finally, let's add the color correction effect. First, we can decrease the limit high so that the white parts in our model looks brighter. I'll also use the temperature and tint sliders to adjust the model's color to match the background photo better. Here you can see that the house in the background image is showing up right behind our design. To hide that, Let's go to the build mode and add a tree right behind our house. There we go, that looks better. Now, I can repeat this process for my render, especially for parts like here and here that don't blend in too well with the background image. As you can see, the cool thing about this feature is that you can always add Lumion objects to make the render look even better. When adding trees and plants, you can also adjust the color of the leaves here to make it blend better with the background photo. And that's how you can create architectural renders in Lumion in 15 minutes. With the help of the OpenStreetMap and the new photo matching tools, we can easily create context surrounding our design to help clients imagine the project in the real world location. In the example scene, there are some example images of photo matching that you can learn from. Even though there are some limitations to the new photo matching feature, if you use the outputs and do some more compositing in post-production software like Photoshop, the final result can look amazing. Anyway, if you like this video, then check out the other two videos in this series. In one of them, I cover a new five-step system to render super fast, and in the other, I cover a more in-depth workflow to show you what can be done when you have more time for rendering. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and comment below and let me know what you think of Lumion 10, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.